Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey had asked the Missouri Supreme Court to block the plea deal that Marcellus Williams just signed on Wednesday, and the Missouri Supreme Court agreed, so here's what happened. In short, the state Supreme Court said that the trial court had to hold a hearing before accepting a plea deal that would give the man a sentence of life without parole. And this is by Shayla Dewan. In a suburban St. Louis courtroom on Wednesday, it appeared that Marcellus Williams would be spared execution after the local prosecutor's office raised questions about his guilt and agreed to a prison sentence of life without parole. Hours later, the Missouri Supreme Court halted the deal over concerns that a judge had overstepped his authority in approving the new plea and sentence. The late-night order was the latest twist in Mr. Williams' long-running effort to prove that he is innocent and avoid being executed, and it was the latest skirmish in a power struggle between the state attorney general, Andrew Bailey, and local prosecutors over who speaks for the state in wrongful conviction cases. Mr. Williams, who is scheduled to be executed on September 24th, was convicted of killing Felicia Gale, a well-known newspaper reporter, in her suburban St. Louis home in 1998. Mr. Williams, 55, has always maintained his innocence, but his appeals and post-conviction pleadings were unsuccessful. In 2021, the Missouri legislature passed a law allowing a prosecutor to challenge old convictions if he or she has information that the convicted person may be innocent or may have been erroneously convicted. The law, a response to advances in forensic science and a growing awareness of the factors that can contribute to wrongful convictions, says that a hearing must be held on such a motion, and it permits the attorney general to participate. The St. Louis County Prosecuting Office, Wesley Bell, filed a 63-page motion to overturn Mr. Williams' conviction. And we, we looked at this about six months ago. I'll put the link in the description. Saying that the two main witnesses against him had not been credible and that the prosecutor had improperly excluded prospective jurors who were black. Mr. Williams, the motion said, was not the source of bloody shoe prints, fingerprints, and hair found at the crime scene. And a DNA analysis showed that DNA found in the murder weapon, a kitchen knife, was not his. Now, we found out on Wednesday that that kitchen knife, it was tainted in some way. Uh, and 2001, Marcellus Williams' trial started in the summer of 2021, and it was the m- improper handling of a prosecutor and a detective that messed up the DNA on that knife. So this was found out on Wednesday, but we get a new detail here that I think is interesting. An evidentiary hearing was set for this past Wednesday, but two days earlier... A private lab engaged by the prosecutor issued a report based on additional analysis. The lab said it had found DNA on the knife matched to that of an investigator and a prosecutor involved in the original trial. So they've been asking for a hearing like this since like 2015. But we finally get a private lab engaged by the prosecution doing this report that they finally provide two days before this evidentiary hearing. But okay. The findings suggested that the investigator and the prosecutor had mishandled what might have been the most important piece of evidence, leaving their own DNA and perhaps eliminating DNA that had been left by the perpetrator. The surprise finding dashed the defense team's hope that the DNA would point to an unknown perpetrator, which would bolster Mr. Williams' claim of innocence. Instead, Mr. Bell's office backed away from its motion that sought exoneration and proposed an agreement that would change Mr. Williams' sentence from death to life without parole. The judge accepted the agreement but the Attorney General, Andrew Bailey, objected, insisting that Mr. Williams was guilty of murder in the death of Miss Gale. Mr. Bailey, who has routinely tried to block exonerations, asked the state Supreme Court to intervene, saying that the judge had not held the required hearing and that he had exceeded his power in accepting the agreement without the Attorney General's assent. And what's so interesting about this is it's, hey, procedurally, the judge was supposed to do this thing, the judge did not do this thing, and thus, the judgment that followed is improper. So we need to go back and do this thing first. We need to actually have this hearing. We can't just plea. Consent order, no bueno. But if we go back to June 14th, 2018, and I go into depth in this in my first video on Marcellus Williams, we have kind of the same thing happen where a procedure that could have helped Marcellus Williams have a hearing sooner, like maybe back in 2018, that procedure wasn't followed and it was just nobody did anything about it. And as a short recap of what I'm talking about, Eric Greetens, the governor, before he had stepped down, had assigned a special board to re-examine the case. And this special five-person board was supposed to review the case and turn over a report to the governor's office. But now that he's gone, that board was canceled by the new governor. And an attorney for Marcellus Williams asked, I know the board was canceled. Will they meet? Will they make a recommendation to you, and what will you do then? 
This was attorney Axelrod asking the new Missouri governor, Michael Parson. Parson said, I assume they would. I heard they're not going to. So I think once they make that recommendation, if they do meet, then we'll discuss that at the time. And after Michael Parson had said that to the press, there was actually an executive order issued by Michael Parson rescinding the order from August 22nd, 2017, that established the Board of Inquiry that was supposed to make this determination. And they never heard about a report. They never met. They never got their findings together. That was it. It was just dropped, even though even though they were supposed to turn over this report to the governor's office. So procedure wasn't followed back then in a way that could have aided the appeal efforts for Marcellus Williams. But here, back in 2024, this week, the right process not being followed ends up having big consequences. It's not just swept under the rug and brushed off as an OL. So continuing the first article we were looking at, it goes on to say that Mr. Bailey has maintained that his office represents the state and that the state Supreme Court has exclusive authority to review death penalty cases, positions that appear to be in direct conflict with the new law. Because the St. Louis prosecuting attorney has expressly challenged Mr. Williams' conviction, they're talking about Wesley Bell, he has an inherent conflict of interest that cannot be reconciled with the state's competing interests in enforcing a lawful, repeatedly affirmed criminal judgment, Mr. Bailey wrote in a filing to the court on Wednesday. In its ruling, the court said that the judge, Bruce F. Hilton, had to either hold the evidentiary hearing or make an argument as to why he should not have to. On Thursday morning, Judge Hilton scheduled this hearing for August 28th, so we're looking at next week. In a statement on Thursday, Mr. Bell said, We still have concerns about the integrity of the conviction of Marcellus Williams, as expressed in our motion that requested this hearing, particularly given that his conviction led to the irrevocable punishment of death. And remember, in the consent order and judgment that was signed on Wednesday by the judge and Marcellus Williams, the court did find, did concede, that constitutional errors did occur in the original trial that undermined confidence in the original judgment. So it seems like both the court, the prosecution, and of course the appeal team, Marcellus Williams, are all on the same page that there were constitutional errors in the initial trial. That's where we are, you guys. So currently, September 24th, execution is still on the table for Marcellus Williams. We will have a hearing on August 28th to, you know, see if anything comes back around with this type of plea agreement, or who knows. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And again, if you want a deep dive, I will link to the other two videos I've done on this topic. They're deep dives for real, like once two and a half hours, once four hours. Um, one about the backstory of the case and the appeal efforts, and the other largely focusing on prosecutor Wesley Bell's effort to vacate the conviction for Marcellus Williams. So with that, I'll turn the floor over to you. Let me know what you think in the comments and take care until next time.